Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. In this short tip tutorial, I'd like to show you a little trick I found. So as you may know, I'm still developing the rigging course for the character. The course will cover this character, but many other stuff for all levels. So I'm making a good progress and I hope to release this in the beginning of next year. As I did before, I'd like to share with you a little tip I came by during this recording. My goal was to be able to make an object rotating from different pivot points, but only using a few bones to achieve this, for ease of animation. If we watch the animation in slow motion, we can see that there is a first pivot point around the handle, then when the blade is thrown it's in the middle of the blade and at the end on the impact the point of rotation is on the tip of the sword. This kind of animation can be really tricky to be done and you will have to adjust the rotation and position and counter animate your sword if you wanted to achieve this with a, a simple rig. So this is why I've done this. So the first thing we need to do is to create an armature, so I will add a single bone, name it correctly, and then I will directly parent the sword to this bone. You don't need to go into vertex weight painting in this way. I will add two new bones on each extremity of the sword, one that will be our new point of rotation, and the other one that will allow us to balance the rotation. The handle bone will be parented to the top bone and the top bone to our main controller. I will finally clear the parenting on the sword and reparent it to the handle bone because this is the last bone in the chain that will generate all the rotation. So I can now rotate the sword with the main controller, the handle and the tip. But as soon as I want to move the center of rotation, I need to move at least two bones, the tip and the handle, to counter the translation of the sword. And what would be cool is to be able to make this automatic. As soon as I move the tip bone, the other one follow. To do so, I will create a first bone that will have the length of the sword, then I will duplicate it and flip it pressing Alt F, so that I have two bones reversed, one on top of each other, that have the same length as the sword, as this will determine my center of rotation. I will then parent those two bones to our main bone, the handle bone if you prefer, and then I will constrain each of our extremity small bones with a copy location from those. So I select the first one and then the second one, at least I'm trying to, and then I set a copy location. In the copy location constraint, we have the option to move the constraint bone toward the head or the tail of the bone. And with this slider, we can change its current position, which is very handy. So, if we manage con to control both positions at the same time, as our bones are uh, in a reversed position, they will automatically counter their location. This will avoid the sword to move along its length. But I first need to set the space to local space on both bones constraints. And as I did break uh, the parenting chain, uh, maybe by mistake before, I need to reparent the small handle bone to our pivot point bone. From there, I can change the position of the rotation by simply entering the same value in the head to tail copy location constraints on both constraints. And then when I rotate the blade, it does rotate around our pivot point. I can then uh, clean a bit my rig by moving all the mechanism bone to a second layer and only keep our main bone, some kind of root bone for the sword and the pivot point bone. I will then add a new bone that will be our property bone 
In this, we will store a custom properties that will allow us to drive uh, the position of head to tail in the copy location of our constraints. I can now name uh, this custom property and copy the data path. Then I will select my constraint bone and add a driver to the head to tail position. So I set it to manually create later. I open the graph editor and choose drivers. And then in the end panel, I will switch to average value as usual. And we will be using a single property which is stored in the armature and I just need to pass the RNF path. Then when I will select my custom property bone and go into the end panel into the custom properties, I will be able to change the value and it will drive the value of the constraint. So then I just need to copy this driver and pass it on our second constraint bone. From there, I will just have to change the custom property value to make the pivot point slide. And I will be able to drive a secondary uh, rotation by just moving this. And this will be really handy uh, for animation. But there is a limitation to this rig and I haven't found yet a way to solve this. And I've been searching a lot, so if you have any ID or any input that will be uh, really appreciated. The problem is that if you want to change the pivot point, you absolutely need the pivot bone to be rotated by zero degree, 180 degree or 360 degree. Uh, because if you don't have those value, it will be offset compared to our main bone and we are we will have this sliding effect that i'm showcasing here so this is for sure a limitation but honestly you can uh, really achieve a very nice animation with this tip and very easily here i'm just controlling the main orientation with the main bone and then i just animate the rotation of our pivot point to get to this result. If you try to achieve this kind of animation with only one controller bone, that will be very hard. So everything is not fixed, but I think this is a pretty good tip for this kind of throwing animation. Or if you have any other uh, stuff like this, you want to be rotating on different positions. I hope you've enjoyed this little tip video. I'm still recording the part two of my previously released course that will be covering a rigging of this character, but also rigging of many other stuff and rigging in general. So if you like to create a character and learn how I've done this one, just grab a copy and I'll see you there. Bye.